Hello, my name is Ian Backhouse, and I am an author of paranormal thrillers. Um, I like to sort of say that rather than horror, because it's not horror in the usual sense. It's not sort of the splatter horror that you sometimes uh, read, or the majority of them seem to be. It's not werewolves and all that sort of thing. It's paranormal fiction. Okay, and they're more kind of thrillers stroke mysteries. It is called Alice Maline, um, and it's about young Alice. We'll talk about that in a minute. Right, well, the name itself, <coughs> sometimes I do a very strange thing. I'll, I'll think of a name of a book that I think I would like to read. I'd hear the name and think, well, yeah, good name, want to read that. And then I put a story to it, <laughs> which isn't necessarily all the best way, but it seems to have worked so far. Um... But this one, it, oh, it's no exception, it was inspired by the name. And this happened, I mean, I'm 54 now, and I thought of the name about, uh, what, 40 years ago? When I was about 14. Um, and even then, I was I was loved horror. I was massively into James Herbert. And um, I was thinking about, I was writing then, although it was dreadful, but you you practice and develop. Anyway. I used to write stories then, and I was listening to a town called Malice by, um, oh, what's the name of the, um, the Star Council, I think. Anyway, um, and I just thought it was a great title. Then I thought about, I wanted to write maybe about um, uh, a character, a younger character who was, um, I didn't know at the time, were they evil, were they a ghost, were they... Um, uh, were they physical? What were they? So I didn't really have an idea, but I thought of Malign from Malice and then oh, Malign, oh, quite a good last name maybe. And I just sort of, um, I don't know, a town called Malice, a town called Alice. So it was just, all that happened was it was this mishmash. Um, and I came up with Alice Malign as the name for this character. And then life got in the way and didn't even give it any more thought until um, last year. And it sort of just gripped me. After the first book, I wanted something uh, that was very different. I didn't want to end up writing another book uh, similar to anything I'd just done, the debut novel, Beneath the Dark. So this was ideal. I, um, I really got into the idea of this character and started developing a story around it. In terms of um, the actual character themselves, uh, it was great fun writing um, from the perspective of an eight-year-old girl who has this phenomenal uh, paranormal ability, but at the time when she's that young, she's misusing it. She uses it to protect herself because she's gone through an awful lot. She's in foster homes. She's had some terrible experiences. She's on her own. She doesn't have parents, and she feels very, very vulnerable. So she's manipulated by those at the end of her paranormal ability and they sort of manipulate her to do all sorts of sort of over the top things to protect her so they help protect her but they're very they're not very nice things that help her and, and she's manipulated and really quite sort of violent and very matter of fact but very bright very intelligent so there's actually quite a lot of dark humor that I was able to put in there um, and you, uh, so she then, you, you see her uh, in the current situation which in, when she's eight years old and this is about 90, no, it's about 87, 1987, and how she goes through this um, manipulation by other people. There's an organisation that's after her. I don't want to sort of give away the whole plot. So she's put into a home that, that supposedly is to help her with this psychological problem, but it's not at all. There's something more to it than that. But it's how she makes a good friend there for the first time in her life and manages to, well, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Things happen. And then we go to 1996, where she's older. She's sort of 16, 17. Doesn't even really know her own birthday. But she's she's really developed into a very strong, um, tough teenager. And, and has managed to start control, or she can control the ability and use it in the right way. And But again, don't want to give away much there. But but that that's when the book really takes off, gets really explosive. And so the other main character is Gabriel Weaver, Gabe Weaver, who, again, we do meet previously. 
in 87, at the same time as we're getting the story about Alice. And he is a special forces operator who um, is basically takes the fall or, or is, is framed for the murder of a civilian by his uh, colleagues. Um, so he's left the army, um, luckily under some psychological reasons, so he didn't get... Uh, didn't end up in the clink, but of course he's enraged about it, he wants um, to exact his revenge, but he needs time, so he's got off the grid completely using his skills, and uh, is trying to figure out how to clear his name, and also he, he is in hiding because he don't, doesn't want these people to finish him off, just in case he does actually expose them. So, you've got these two stories running, and he's 32, 33, and these two guys, Alice and Gabe, meet up under very extraordinary circumstances um, later in the book not in the early version and so she does end up with an ally she ends up with a friend and she ends up with Gabe um, but it's all very it's still very um, she, she doesn't sort of show his affection or she, there is affection for him in, in terms of a, a sort of father figure but that, that slowly comes out. And again, there's a lot of banter and that kind of thing, even though there's a lot of dark stuff going on. So those are the two main characters, without giving too much away about the book. But I'm really excited about it. And so far, um, I have to tell you, I, I've got something like 11... It only came out a week ago. I've got 11 Goodreads reviews that are, I think, all five star. And this is from independent reviewers. I'm absolutely over the moon because I just want people to really love and enjoy this story. And... It's turned out just the way I wanted it. Oh, it's so much stronger than the first novel, I think. A couple of things. I just want people... I want to write a book that I want to read. That I come across the shelf, like the title, thing. oh, interesting. Read the back and think, well, I've got to, I've got to read this book. And um, So I just want it to be a great story, really rounded characters, really natural dialogue, because that to me will get people reading that. As long as they can sit down and or take on holiday or sit down, you know, a rainy afternoon or whatever, and they read the book and they just love reading the book and they get drawn into the story, that is that is the reason I'm doing it. And it gives me such a buzz when you get a great review and someone loves the book because you know that's that's why you do it. And it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Um I mean, the writing process itself is fantastic. I mean, some of it's the first parts of planning I hate because you've got to get it right or I've got to get it right. But then when I start writing, it's... Oh, I just love it. I sort of write... I view it in my head like a film, really. So I try to almost direct it and do it from, from angles and positions and descriptions and environments as if you're watching a film. And I, I just... I love doing that. I can't tell you why, really. I just do, I suppose... Well, the one piece that would usually be finish finish a book. That was the best advice I was ever given. Because initially I was writing books and thinking, oh, this is absolutely rubbish, you're not finishing it. But an author told me, just finish the book, because it proves to yourself you can finish a book. And then at least you can go back over it and make it better. So over the years and years and years, that's what I kept doing, writing books that just gradually got better. I learned more, I learned more from other people, from other authors, from reading. Um... So yeah, finish the book, finish the book. Um, and the only other thing I'd add now is persevere when it comes to uh, the publishing, whether it's in, uh, indie publishing that's getting very popular or... Because I, I had a publisher for the first one, but I've gone indie this time for various reasons, uh, sort of personal reasons for control and all that sort of thing. So, um, but persevere because it is really hard, but if you do have that ability and a talent, and uh, I don't mean that me, I just generally, if you have that, if it's a good book then, say, uh, it's going to rise to the top to a certain degree, you're, you're going to do well from it, but my God, you've got to persevere with the marketing promotion, it's just 24-7, so don't, don't give up, right? I tend to give up a lot, and then suddenly the next day, I start, I, I, I'm back in it. Uh, this one is on Amazon. Uh, it's Amazon, um, so it's Kindle Unlimited, uh, normal Kindle, paperback and hardback. 
it's about to come out in Audible as well. Because um, the last book, I had quite a few people asking about Audible and I hadn't done one. So I'm also going to do Audible for the first book, Beneath the Dark. Uh, which you can still get on Amazon, but you can also get that in bookshops. But to be honest, I'd go through Amazon. It's just much easier. Um, and that's uh, that's Kindle. I will go on Kindle Unlimited. That I've bought the rights back from the publisher, so that means I can start putting in uh, Kindle Unlimited, and I can do a hardback version, and I can get Audible. So that'll be coming soon. So if you do read out some line and you like it, go back and try Beneath the Dark, because I think you like it. It's very different, but I think you like that as well. So, thank you, Table Read. Um... Very much hope you will check me out, uh, you guys out there. And I, if you do, I very much hope you enjoy the books. Mm -hmm.